up at a certain time, you're going to bed at a certain time, and everything in between. You don't have to worry about real life, kind of like bills, uh, regular worries. That's the easy part. Difficult part is facing yourself, um, come to terms with who you are that you didn't really, you don't really get a chance to realise so much about yourself when you're <clears throat> in the world. Um, that was one of the most difficult things for me, I think, because there's nowhere to run, there's nowhere to hide. You can't jump behind a laptop, you can't put on your radios or your TV and escape. All is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ. We would look after the house, so make the, all the beds and hoovering and clear, clear, cleaning the bathrooms and looking after the house really and serving the meals, sometimes even cooking and helping Callum here doing a bit of work outside. If we were perfect, you wouldn't have to come here. It's it's about like just growing and like developing that faith. And there's everyone like there's so many people around it. None of us are perfect. Where are you and are you as a Hiding in a life I wish I knew. Sometimes when I came here, like you'd serve someone and they'd be rude to you, and you're like, and you're still expected to show them love, and you're still expected to keep going and keep, and you're like, I don't understand. But as it goes on, you understand more and more and more, and then you actually crave to serve people. You don't just do it out of habit, you actually want to do it. You actually hope that there's someone who comes in who's, who's, rude to you or awkward because they're usually the ones with the biggest problems and they're usually the ones that you find out you end up being closest to. <laughs> it's like a family and you come here and they love you unconditionally. Um, so so that un unconditional love really he really healed me, it healed like, um, uh, a brokenness I had in my heart of thinking I wasn't good enough. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Aloy, Aloy, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with, with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus cried, cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. You see, like, what a life of daily prayer can actually do, and like, it does. It brings you closer to God. It and never it leaves you. Yeah, like, it never does. And you, you give up things that you deem really important, and you realise they're not as important as your faith and your relationship with God. Like what? <laughs> a mobile phone. Drinking.
good. Very good indeed.